What's up, my man? Hey, man, it's your boy Shawty L.O. Jr., man. Son of the King, Shawty L.O. himself. Real West Side legend, man. Hey, man, what's happening? Talk to me. Man, tell me what it's like. With the, do you feel pressure to carry around the legacy? Nah, I actually don't feel pressure. Um, basically, my dad always told me and told well, all of his kids, he said, you know, y'all can be much better in life than me. So, you know, coming from him, like, his word to me is like gold. So anything he say, I take it, I run with it. It's just the only pressure I really felt is is from the people around me trying to push me to go ahead and put stuff out and it wasn't really pre prepared how I wanted it to be. Even though, like, honestly, I I never really did music ever in life. I ain't never thought about it until, uh, thought about doing it until he passed. So it's just for me feeling comfortable or feeling like I'm putting out the best version of me and people around me were just thirsty and just thirsty for okay well yo, he, he gone now it's your turn and you know and that's where really that's where the pressure has started i'm like man y'all hold on nah we ain't doing that if if i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it the, the, the right way yeah that's real now what are some of the things that that you feel like that he taught you to prepare you for this moment, even not knowing that he was preparing you for this moment, and I, that people really don't really wouldn't wouldn't expect to hear him say to to his son, or, you know what I mean, just from a different perspective. Because I think in the industry, people have a persona of things. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, like things he used to just basically say, he like like he just used to tell me, you know, soon it's gonna be you, or it's your turn to you know take it over, like months. Before he had passed, me and him were having a conversation, and you know, and he was just telling me like, you know, it's your time, you know, to come in, step in, and take it over, and you know, and and you know, and lead. So it's like those moments, like I like like I never take for granted. It's like that those mean a lot to me coming from him, because just really knowing what type of person he was, like. For him to say that to anybody or to somebody, which means he he had been watching you, paying attention to you, studying you, like just everything. Like he gonna really watch you and and just study you before he say something like that because he he wouldn't be willing to give up that role or or that position to just anybody. So just things like that, and even like going out of town and, and doing shows with him, like like I'll be on um, stage with him, and like and and sometimes he just pass me the mic out the blue, like here, and you know, and like uh, he'll just throw you in the line, like you just gotta go on and go with it. So it, man, just so much, a lot really, man, it's a lot. So one, of, what's one of the like you were saying, he throwed you in the in the line like sometimes. What are one of the moments and the places that you remember just the, the most that he did that to you? Um, we were in Florida. Um, he 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 had a show in um I think in the Destin, Florida. Um, and we were there, and then boom, it's like so. I walked on the stage with him. Well, I, I actually walked out on the stage first, and I, I was standing at the edge of the stage while the um the um promoter was like, "Shorty, low in the building, you know, man, he finna woo woo woo." So I was already on the stage. So, and for the females or, or them not to really know who I was, but the type of attention that they grabbing on my pants legs and doing all type of stuff, I was like, "Damn, <laughs> like this is what this life is really about," you know, because. I never really looked at my dad how other people did or or how I probably could have or should have. I just seen him as a regular person, my dad. But I ain't really see what he meant to the people until after he passed. Like like the impact, like the the just the everything. Impact, the legacy, the way he 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 showed people how to do things, like just hustle and grind and just 
what it means to the city. Mm-hmm. And like you said, the impact. Let's talk about that day. I know you, I don't really want to take you back there because I think the the hip hop world stopped in that moment. It was a shock to everybody. So I know it was a shock to you, but like you were talking about the impact it had. Tell me some of the things that you remember most, the, the impact that it had. Tell me what, how it affected you. Really, honestly, um, when my dad first passed, I was in, in, in jail actually. So when he passed, I had just talked to him the night before. And like, uh, well, that night that he passed, I had just talked to him, like, because my gr- granddad had just passed two weeks before my, my dad passed. So, so his dad had just passed. So he was going through it and feeling some type of way and everything. And he was just telling me that everybody was trying to call and tell him, tell him, you know, to come out the house. You know, friends, you just being friends, low come out. We got this going on, or whatever. So. And I talked to him, he was like, man, I don't really want to go nowhere, but you know, everybody keep calling me, you know, trying to get me out the house. And, and, and that's when he told me that he was going to the flame, you know? So, but like how I know his impact is real because like the, the music world and the people are are just embracing me like right now. Like they, hey, you saw low son, you do this, come on. I'm gonna help you, support you. To, best way I can you know and the grind for the other artists is way different but I will say this and I really haven't shared this with nobody I was just incarcerated the early part of this year for a violation of probation and January the 4th my dad came to me in a dream because I had court it's January 5th he came to me in a dream he said you you're not going home tomorrow but when you go home Make sure that you give the music your all. He say, you going to make it. He say, the only way you're going to make it is if you give it 100%. I'm going to put the pieces around you to to m- speed up the process. But you just got to give it 100%. Just because you, my son, that don't it exempt you from the work. You still got to work just like every other artist. And boom, I got out February the... I want to say the 12th. I got out February the 12th. Boom, man. And I just started taking the music serious. Boom. And just like you told me in the dream, all the pieces been coming together. So it's basically, I feel like God God has you where he wants you. Because if I would have put my music out back then, I wasn't as good or as confident. And these pieces that I have now probably wouldn't have been available to me then. So it's just like, perfect timing. God has what he wants you. And what my dad told me in the dream, hey, you're going to do it and I'm going to put the pieces around you. And it's happening so quick. Like the process. So then let's talk about some of your projects you have going on that you've been working on. Okay, so my first project, well this is going to be my first project. It's actually going to be called Step One. This is me taking my first step into into stepping in the legacy and and foundation that he paved for me and our family you know just me stepping into that role like hey it's my, my turn to, to actually lead and be me and show the world who i am because everybody know who he is but who am i you know so this is step one all right well let's talk about that chain right there okay tell me about the process of it being the history of the chain the history it's a lot of history <laughs> it's a lot of history just this chain was even bought before he was shawty low like the rapper shawty low you know just just from being out in the streets hustling and, and doing this thing like the, the hard upbringing and and everything he had to endure to become who he was is what this chain represent hardship hard work grinding like don't ever give up don't ever fold nothing fake nothing phony just stay down and grind always have hope don't never give up so and this means d for well down for life I'm, I'm down with the people who it started with who was there when i struggled who was there when when times were good and when times bad 
You know what I mean? So it's just like, we just gotta stay focused on any goal, any obstacle in life, we can overcome it. But you just gotta have that vision and know that that you can. Because at the end of the day, hard hard times don't last. Strong people do. All right, man. I mean, I could end it on that, but I do wanna say, so who are some of the people you'd like to shout out and that you've been working with? Uh, shout out to Casper. Most people don't know him, or they probably don't know him at all. But Casper is, man, a main reason why why I'm out here pushing right now. Like, he came around, like, once I came home from um, jail or whatever, the early part of this year, and just been pushing me. Hey, let's go. Let's do this. Let's do that. We got to get this right with your music, the business side and everything. So he just he basically, basically been coaching me and pushing me and teaching me the ropes. Just the first person to ever do that since I done tried to do music or started. I started back in 2017 and I was trying it for a, like two or three months and the people around me was just, you know, the wrong team. So I stopped and I just recently started back the end of 2020. So I started back pushing hard so Casper really just came and showed me the business side of it and helped me just to go and push forward like put something out there so people can know that you're doing this and then we'll figure out the rest along the way and I want to give another special shout out to um, Travell. Travell been sitting, sitting with me being patient in the studios helping me find my sound my swag like how to how to get my thoughts out on paper so he's been real patient with me like long days long nights and I mean, we probably get half a song done and i ain't never heard him complain or say nothing or act funny or or do, or, or do anything different so travel and casper are big reasons why i'm here pushing today doing what i'm doing and how i'm doing it and some of the artists you work with um i actually got a record with um schoolie on the way so mm. but Travell is also a artist um and little zane um he's in the bmf movie and everything um he you well he was a hot one of the hottest artists in the, the world at one time so me and him we got a record that we working on i'm actually working on a record with life Jennings also but i'm giving y'all too much juice man <laughs> Too much sauces. Just stay tuned, man. I got a lot in the works, a lot of stuff going on. I'm working hard, man, and I'm learning along the way. So, you know, I'm getting it. Well, hey, we here right now. And so what you have, we happen to meet here today. And tell me why you're here today. I'm here today, um, man. Mike Deuce called me out, man. Um, We went to KOD last night. He basically hit me and basically said he, you know, he see that I'm working and I'm grinding and you know he want to work with me and build with me so you know I'm I'm, I'm all for partnering up helping people like help helping each other grow and you know just be building a team building the empire you know so he can help me I can help him boom so now he can help his people better I can help mine better it's, it's all about growth and expanding it's not really about competition if we can all come together and be a unit you can build an empire. All right, man. Well, this is Rock Square 357 Productions. And like I always say, man, we out here. And right now, we're in these ATL streets. If you could, just give a shout out to Rock Square 357 Productions. Man, shout out to Rock Square 357 Productions, man. The realest in the streets right now. Y'all got to stay tuned, stay locked in. You want in, you got to tap in. That's the man with the plan. Let's get it. Shout out to L.O. Jr. in the building.